me to find a way through. Isn't this amazing? It just shows you how intelligent these cats can be. Oh, and that light is phenomenal. Uh, I think you're going to have to come down, Mr. Mvula. This is indecision at its best. There's my one word tweet. <laughs> indecision from both Shungile and now Mvula. Don't fall. No, we found our way. Seb, I'm going to reverse a little bit just so we can get some of the branches out the way. Now, now, Wendy. Behave yourself. Can I go straight back there, Seb? Yeah. Um, good. good. Okay, that should be a little bit better, Seb. Yes, thank you. There we go. So he's now just stopped and he's just staring at the others below him. Maybe he's seen something else that he just wants to check out before he approaches the carcass, but he's definitely going to start feeding now, now. There we go. Now, if he pulled it a little bit to the left, it would be nice, away from that branch. Now, let's see if this is going to break and little Shongile is going to be rewarded. Him pulling the carcass might actually drive her to come a little bit closer but look at the power he's got he's actually pulling that off thorns you can imagine how the thorns are sticking into that skin there's also been a bit of dried meat that's sort of bonded with the tree so very powerful to be able to move that through all of those thorns especially an object that has got limbs all over the place and makes it difficult to actually see what's going on or to be able to move it maneuver it between these thorns now he's busy plucking so he's just going to use those front teeth to pull all of the hair away so he doesn't have to ingest that at the end of the day hair is not going to be the best thing to ingest you're going to find that it doesn't sort of digest well and so rather than eating it pluck it all out and then expose that skin and meat that he can then eat look how effective he is at doing it see how they're all kind of falling out big clumps of it So, Skywalker, you say don't drop it. Well, yes, don't drop it is probably a good thing, although we would like Shongile to get a little bit, so maybe half can drop because no hyenas are here yet, so they won't run off with it. Even if he did drop it, you'd find he'd run down quickly and grab it and take it back up, or he'd try and consume as much as possible on the ground before any hyenas arrived, and if hyenas did arrive, he would then take it up from there. Yeah. So, luckily for him, there aren't any lurking spotted hyenas because otherwise this carcass would be gone quite quickly. How's that, though, as a way to end the day? Isn't that magnificent? So for all of you who like screenshots or desktops for your computers, I would say that's not a bad one. What do you think, Seb? Mm, I agree. Yeah, so that's a fun memory of Africa, that's for sure. So Leslie, you're saying it's not unusual that Mvula's being fairly friendly and tolerant is probably a better word of Shongile and in this sort of given the situation. Um, Leslie, not really. I've seen Mvula do it quite often. It's unusual in that big male leopards generally assert their dominance, but when it's a female leopard, I've seen male leopards do this often where they steal a kill and they'll sit and they'll just growl at the female, but they're not really interested in attacking her in any way or chasing her off. As long as she doesn't come near the food, he's quite happy just to sit there and watch that female move around. So I've seen it with Anderson, Tingana, Mvula, um, Jordan when he was still alive, Mafufunya, and they done it, Shavona Kele in the south, they all seem to be the same in this regard, that they will allow females close by as long as they don't go to the food itself. If it was a young male, it would be a little bit more interesting. What has surprised me is that Tandi had no sort of well, go at Shongile, because I would have thought Tandi, seeing another female leopard, might have had a bit to say about that and to try and chase off, but maybe Tandi realizes Shongile is still tiny and is not really a threat. At the end of the day, Shongile is not territorial, she's not marking, she's not calling, and so Tandi maybe knows that she's more dominant anyway, and that's why she's not too stressed about it. Oh, but that light is as good as it gets. Exquisite Bliss, you're asking if Shungile is moving closer. I honestly don't know. I can't see her. The last I heard, she was quite far away, and I haven't seen her come back in this area at all, so I don't think so. I think she, where she is, she can probably see this male feeding and knows that she 
doesn't have to well she can't get too close yet and that there's no opportunity to get to the kill she might also have realized now that he's up there that there's no chance and she's now just drifted off completely and moved on and gone to maybe go and find some water or another opportunity to hunt that could also have been the situation so hard to say but i can't see her to be honest she's not anywhere close by that she's visible at this stage that is very very pretty and the sun is about to go down so we're about to lose that beautiful light that we're seeing on him now now you can see he's exposed that leg joint and he's now tearing into it and getting whole big chunks of meat And that's what he was looking for. And listen to how rough his tongue is when he licks. So some of you may be a bit sensitive. I would say probably now is the time to turn away as he starts tucking into the red fleshy part of this animal. You can even hear some of the bones that he is breaking and I was saying this morning that this diker is still small enough even for Mvula in his older age to be able to go through the leg bones and the ribs and even most of the spine so he'll pretty much consume everything there you might find you know the horns will drop down and a bit of the skull but he'll even be able to break the skull open and access those nutrient rich brains that the the diker has and so it's it's all valuable nutrients as much as it sounds disgusting and is not very pleasant he definitely will try and access that and get as much out of it as possible So Roshni, you're asking how long it takes for the meat to rot. Well, Roshni, it depends on the weather conditions. The hotter it is, the quicker it goes off. But generally, it will already start to be quite rotten. It wouldn't be fit for human consumption already by this afternoon, being exposed into the sun like that. Um, but leopards, I've seen eating carcasses that are almost liquid and really green and disgusting. So they do even eat that, and they'll kind of consume anything that they can get their hands on. After all, we know Mbula was eating a rotting hyena, and Seb and I drove past that area this morning and it stinks where it was so most definitely they'll consume pretty much anything even if it is very rotten now we're going to enjoy the last rays of light on Mvula as it starts to fade away you can actually see the colors already sort of lightening and getting duller and while we do that I believe Scott has got a massive massive individual animal to show all of you <laughs> 